uh, but uh, just targeting web applications. So here, um, in this application, this intra-web application, it's here configured as a standalone server application. What do I have? I have three forms, uh, three units that represent three forms. First of all, unit one is the form that will be sent to an iPhone class or a or mobile phone class device. I have a second form and here I just added a label uh, indicating that this is the content that is supposed to be sent to a tablet or in this case an iPad device. And third, I have um, a form that is my user interface for a desktop browser. Could be a lot heavier, etc. the thing for the desktop browser. So where are we going to decide, control, that the right user interface goes to the right device? That all happens in the server controller. So the server controller is um, a standard, always available part of an intra-web application. Um, and there, in this uh, server controller, where you have the server controller form, that is not really a form, it's like a data module, you, you never see it, but it's, it's the heart of the intra-app server that controls uh, incoming requests and controls what is being sent out. And so in this uh, server controller, we have a couple of events, the on before dispatch event, which is here in this case, the critical event that we will use uh, to control what is sent to what device. Uh, so let's have a look at what's happening here in our on before dispatch event. Uh, you can see here that um, the critical thing is um, the agent and the agent is a string that is being sent from the mobile browser or, or any browser and has some data on uh, the specifics of the browser. Uh, so what we do is actually nothing more than detect if we have in this agent string something like iPad or something like iPhone, iPod. The Apple uh, browser on the mobile device is sending this information to uh, the server. If it was Android, um, if, if we would include Android, we could add here as well um, Android. And then this content would be sent to an Android uh, device. Um, if we detect this in the, in the user agent string, then we redirect automatically to a sub, um, a sub folder. Um, of our web application, in this case, iPad, in this case, iPhone. Now, here in the initialization section of um, our server controller, I have added two uh, TIW URL map uh, calls, and this makes the connection between uh, the subfolder iPhone which I connect to the TIW form 1, the iPad to the TIW form 2, and the other uh, unit 3 is configured as the default. So if, it's, if it cannot detect iPhone, iPad, or iPod, it will uh, redirect to unit 3, form 3. Otherwise, it uh, performs this redirection. So let's see what happens if I run this um, application. First of all, I will connect from um, Google Chrome. And if everything works fine, okay, it did. Uh, you can see that um, it sent our form for the desktop browser to uh, Chrome. Now, I have here uh, the iPad. Uh, so I can connect to this standalone server right now running on my uh, laptop. And if I, let's click go, and here you can see um, that I'm, that it's sent to this iPad, to the same server application, the iPad specific uh, content. 
If you have a mobile uh, phone that is connected to IT DEFCON, you could uh, try from your device, uh, if you have an iPhone, and you connect to um, this address, no, that's the local address, uh, but here it's 192, 168, 112, and then four times eight is the port that is being used. Uh, so if you have an iPhone, then it should show the iPhone uh, specific page on your uh, mobile phone. I leave the server running in the background if you uh, want to try and play with it. Okay. So that was the first step, sending the right content to the right device. Second step is, let's say, the general rules for uh, creating a mobile web application. And there are uh, three things that are extremely important when you uh, create a mobile web application. Um, I don't know if people in Italy, uh, if they uh, have the same thing about um, if you invest in real estate, if you invest in real estate, estate in Belgium, they say that there are three things extremely important to pay attention to if you make your investment in real estate. Do you know what, what that might be? They're not investing in real estate anymore in Italy. <laughs> you run out of money? Or <laughs> <laughs> um, in Belgium, they say there are three things that you need to pay attention to that are extremely important. That is location, location, location. and location. So I changed this statement to mobile web applications where I say what is extremely important if you create a mobile web application with VCL for the web. And these three things is async, async, and async. You will really want to use async to optimize um, the, the experience, the speed, the bandwidth usage of your uh, mobile web application. So I hope that if there was one thing you remember from this session, that it is use async. So the big question is, what is async, of course? Um, there are two things. Um, first of all, async events. That means that the normal way for a web application is that if there is some data uh, that needs to go from the web browser to the server, that you post back your page to the server. So the entire page is going back to the server. Asynchronous events means that we are not using a page uh, submit or post back. We are just sending some minimal amount of information back to the server. On the other side, asynchronous updates, the normal mechanism is that, okay, we have a post back of the browser to the server and the server sends back the entire page to the browser. Asynchronous updates means that we are not doing this, that we are just sending the minimal amount of information that is needed to update whatever part of the page that needs to be updated in response of something that happens. So let me show you with some, some, a quick demo why this asynchronous behavior um, is so critical. So I have created a really minimal uh, demo. Have some of you tried with the iPhone to connect to the standalone server? Sometimes but that's, but that's not an iPhone. Android, yeah. Desktop, Desktop. Okay, I did not specify anything yeah, yeah. specific in the user agent checking, mm -hmm. so it's normal that you get the desktop browser. So let's have a look at this minimal application. It's just an intra web application. What do I have here? I have a list box. Um, to um, make the page a little more heavy to see the effect of the asynchronous behavior, what I do here is add 5,000 items to my uh, list box. 
then I have a button. And in this button, click event handler, uh, what I have is, is that I update my label with the text that is in the edit control. In this button, I'm not using the onClick handler, but I'm using the asynchronous version of the click handler. And in this asynchronous version, I'm doing exactly the same. I'm updating the label. So let's see what's happening uh, when I run this. Let's run this in uh, the Chrome browser. So I have here my list just to make sure that my page has some, already some amount of data. Um, and I have my edit control. If I add here, for example, IT DEFCON, and now look good at the screen, when I press my button sync, did you see the effect that the page disappeared for a moment, became a, a white page, and then it comes back and the label is updated to um, the value I set in the edit control. Now, the same thing in uh, the asynchronous version. So watch the screen. Have you seen instant updating of the label, no refresh at all. Uh, so you get like a, a Windows application experience uh, using this uh, asynchronous mechanism. As it is Friday evening, and I guess that you're all tired from the two days of IT DEFCON with so much interesting information, uh, I will skip the next uh, section, the next two pages that um, reveal some detail about what is going on behind the scenes with all this asynchronous behavior. Um, why I will skip this? Simple, because you don't need it. The only um, moment that you need it is if you want to write your own uh, intra-web components and want to expose this uh, asynchronous behavior in your uh, components. Uh, so if you do not write components, you do not have the, to bother about the technical details going on behind the scenes. To give you a quick technical summary anyway, it's based on um, XML, a package of XML information that is being sent to, uh, from the server to the browser. And this package holds the information that informs the JavaScript code that is loaded on your page anyway, that informs the JavaScript code, okay, I have here some data that is supposed to go, for example, the text to this label, a color to uh, some button or whatever. So it's a package with a minimal amount of data, some instructions that say do this or do that with uh, the data that arrives on uh, the browser. And the, the thing is, if you write your own components, you have to um, inform the IntraWeb framework what JavaScript code in your custom control will handle the data that is coming in. Because IntraWeb cannot know that if we, for example, if we create a grid, how we want specific data that is, is asynchronously sent to the grid, it's only the grid who knows what to do with the data. But we have to inform the interweb framework, okay, this data will be handled by this JavaScript method, and this JavaScript method is part of the grid code and will handle the data in the, in the way that it is designed. So here you see a little bit the technical details, um, I, but I believe all the sessions are uh, available for download afterwards. And a good uh, thing is if you buy our components, you have the full source code so you can inspect all the, the low level details that are uh, behind it. Okay, so asynchronous things, um, that still comes down to communication between the client and the server. Um, in some cases, like what I showed you in the demo, it was an edit control where I typed some text and I wanted some label to reflect what was in the edit, in the, in the edit control. 
you do not really need the server to update the label because all the knowledge about what is about to happen, the client has sufficient knowledge to do that. So, a next step is if you want to avoid that communication at all, that is by using um, what we call JavaScript client events. The normal model is you assign an on-click, on async click, etc. event handler that is Delphi code that performs something. Here, many of the intra-web components, including uh, almost all of our controls, have properties, string list properties, and in these string list properties, you add, or you can add, JavaScript code. And this JavaScript code will be executed in response to what client event handler it is specified for. I give an example. The button has a client script uh, click event. That means that what you specify in the string list as JavaScript code will be executed when the button is clicked uh, in your page. Uh, no. So if you stay in the Delphi territory, you do not need to know anything about HTML, JavaScript, and many of you do not want to know. Uh, but the idea is if there is something crucial, something for your performance that you really want to optimize, the capability, the flexibility is there to take advantage of it. Okay, so that's a little bit in general um, the rules, what's available, what you can use, should use. Uh, so let's have a look now at um, some of the controls that we created to uh, optimize the user inter interface experience. Um, so what we do is a little bit summary. Uh, we use asynchronous any events anywhere. We expose the client uh, JavaScript events. We avoid the use of images. Now you can ask, why is it important to avoid the use of images? Have any idea? There are actually two, two, uh, two reasons. So first of all, bandwidth. If you do not need to download your image, then you have saved bandwidth. That's, that's one thing. Second thing is some browser behavior that is really annoying with images. You have all seen and experienced the effect that your page is loading, content, text content of your page is already available, and then the server starts sending the images. And your page starts to reorganize because, okay, this image is so large and the other one is so large, and as the images come in, you get this page, blah, 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 and it gets, okay, to its final composition. If we want to use some graphical elements and we uh, specify this in uh, JavaScript code, first of all, we do not need to load um, the image. Secondly, uh, this JavaScript code is executed before the page is actually loaded. We do it from the onload event. That means that at that time, it has not yet started composing the page. And so your page will appear instant. You do not have this slow build up uh, effect anymore. Um, and finally, of course, these components uh, take advantage of expose uh, specific things in the mobile browsers uh, and make it available to your uh, web application. You have a question? That all depends on what uh, WebKit, because the ultimate interface between the hardware of your mobile device and your web application is the, the browser. So it's the browser who will determine what you can and what you can't do. The camera is one of the things, as far as I know, in the current state, might change in the future, who knows, but that you can currently not yet access from your browser the geolocation in, uh, is something that's GPS of your mobile device. WebKit has extensions to access that uh, GPS. 
So it's really WebKit who determines what you can, what you can't. So things like a camera 